Welcome to Unlimited Horror Stories, the channel that brings you the most chilling and spine-tingling tales of terror. In this video, we bring you a truly unique story that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Rise of the Rabbit, the Mercenary and the Machine Army is a post-apocalyptic horror story about a mercenary named John who uses an army of robots to rescue a girl trapped in a quarantine zone with rabid humans. This story is filled with action, suspense, and a sense of looming dread that will keep you hooked until the very end. We invite you to support our channel and help us continue to bring you more amazing horror stories like this one. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy Rise of the Rabbit, the Mercenary, and the Machine Army. The mercenary known as John was no stranger to dangerous missions, but this one felt different. He had been hired to rescue a young girl who was trapped in a quarantine zone with rabid humans. It was a suicide mission, but John was confident in his abilities and the army of robots he had brought with him. As he made his way through the abandoned streets, he couldn't help but feel a chill run down his spine. The silence was deafening broken only by the occasional howl of a rabid human in the distance. John had seen the effects of the virus before, and it was not something to be taken lightly. He had been given a map of the area, but the streets were all but unrecognizable, littered with debris and broken down vehicles. John knew he had to move quickly, but cautiously, as the slightest misstep could mean the end of his mission. His army of robots, all armed to the teeth, marched behind him in perfect formation, their metal bodies gleaming in the dim light. John had spent months developing and perfecting these machines, each one designed to take on the rabid humans with ease. As they made their way deeper into the quarantine zone, the smell of death and decay grew stronger. John tried to ignore it, focusing instead on the task at hand. The girl was out there somewhere, and he was the only one who could save her. Finally, they arrived at the building where the girl was supposed to be held captive. It was a rundown, dilapidated structure, barely standing after years of neglect. John knew the risks of entering such a place, but he had no choice. The robots took up position around the perimeter, scanning for any signs of danger. John approached the building cautiously, his senses on high alert. He kicked in the door and made his way inside, his gun drawn and ready for anything. What he found inside was even worse than he had imagined. The walls were covered in blood and filth, and the stench was overpowering. The girl was huddled in a corner, her eyes wide with fear. John approached her slowly, trying not to startle her. It's okay, he said softly. I'm here to rescue you. The girl didn't say anything, but her eyes told the story. She was terrified, and who could blame her? John knew he had to act fast before the infected humans found them. He scooped the girl up in his arms and made his way back to the robots waiting outside. They formed a protective circle around him as he led them back through the streets, the infected humans hot on their heels. John didn't know if they would make it out alive but he was determined to try. As they made their way back to safety, he couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over him. The mission was a success, but at what cost? He knew the horrors of the quarantine zone would stay with him forever. As John and the girl made their way out of the quarantine zone, the infected humans chased them relentlessly. They were howling and screaming, their eyes wild with a feral hunger. John knew they had to keep moving, or they would be torn to shreds. The robots marched ahead, firing their weapons in all directions, trying to keep the infected humans at bay. John had never seen anything like it before the humans were no longer human. They had been consumed by the virus, turning into mindless creatures with one goal, to feed. John had encountered the virus before, but never in such a concentrated form. He knew the dangers of being bitten or scratched the virus would take hold within minutes,
turning him into one of the rabbit horde. As they made their way through the abandoned streets, John tried to keep his emotions in check. He had to stay focused, or they would all die. He could feel the girl trembling in his arms, but he didn't dare stop to comfort her. There was no time for that. The infected humans were closing in, their howls getting louder with each passing moment. John knew they had to find a way out of the quarantine zone, or they would all be trapped there forever. As they turned a corner, John spotted a tall fence in the distance. It was their only chance. He signaled to the robots, and they made a beeline for the fence, firing their weapons as they went. The infected humans were right behind them, their claws and teeth gnashing at the air. John could feel their breath on his neck, and he knew he had to move faster. The robots began to climb the fence, their metal bodies glinting in the moonlight. John handed the girl off to one of the robots, knowing that she would be safer with them than with him. As he began to climb the fence himself, he could feel the infected humans closing in. He could see their twisted faces, their eyes filled with a bloodlust he had never seen before. Just as he reached the top of the fence, one of the infected humans grabbed hold of his leg. John could feel its teeth sinking into his flesh, and he knew he was done for. But then, something unexpected happened. The infected human suddenly recoiled, its body jerking and twitching. John looked down and saw that one of the robots had fired a tranquilizer dart into its neck. The infected human fell to the ground, its body going limp. John knew that the robots had saved his life. He pulled himself over the fence and collapsed on the other side, his leg throbbing with pain. The robots gathered around him, checking his wound and administering first aid. As he lay there, catching his breath, John knew that he had underestimated the power of the virus. He had thought he could handle anything, but the infected humans were a force to be reckoned with. He knew that he had to be more careful, or he would not survive the next encounter. As John lay recovering from his wound, the girl sat beside him, her eyes wide with fear. The robots stood guard, their weapons at the ready, as they waited for their leader to regain his strength. John knew they couldn't stay in one place for long. The infected humans would soon be on their trail again, and they needed to find a safe place to regroup. Just then, a figure appeared in the distance. It was a woman, dressed in tattered clothing and carrying a large backpack. She walked towards them confidently, despite the danger that lurked around every corner. As she approached, John saw that she was armed with a rifle and a handgun. She had the look of someone who had been surviving on her own for a long time. Who are you? John asked, his voice hoarse from exhaustion. The woman hesitated for a moment, eyeing the robots warily. But then she spoke. My name is Sarah. I've been watching you for a while now. You seem to know what you're doing. John nodded, still suspicious of the woman. He had learned long ago not to trust anyone in this new world. But something about her seemed different. What do you want? He asked. I want to help you, Sarah replied. I've been alone for too long. It's time to join forces. John considered this for a moment. He knew that having another ally would be useful, especially someone who knew the area and had survived for so long. But he couldn't take any chances. Okay, he said finally. But you have to prove yourself first. Sarah nodded, and together they set off through the abandoned streets. John noticed that she was a skilled fighter, moving quietly and confidently through the shadows. She seemed to know the layout of the area, leading them through back alleys and abandoned buildings. As they walked, Sarah told John her story. She had been a nurse before the virus hit, and had been working in the quarantine zone when it was overrun by the infected humans. She had managed to escape, but had been alone ever since. 
John could sense the pain in her voice as she spoke, and he knew that she was someone he could trust. They reached a small abandoned store, and Sarah led them inside. It was surprisingly well stocked, with canned food and medical supplies lining the shelves. John realized that Sarah had been surviving on her own for a long time, and had managed to scavenge what she needed to stay alive. As they sat around a small fire, eating canned food and resting, John realized that he had found a new ally in Sarah. She was smart, resourceful, and most importantly, she had survived in a world that was hostile and unforgiving. Together, they might have a chance of making it out of the quarantine zone alive. But even as they rested, John knew that the infected humans were still out there, waiting for their next opportunity to strike. They had to keep moving, or they would never make it out alive. John, the girl, and Sarah had been hiding out in the abandoned store for a few hours, gathering supplies and planning their next move. The infected humans had been silent, and John knew that they were biding their time, waiting for the perfect moment to attack. It was time to put their plan into action. The three of them would make their way to the quarantine zone, where the girl's family was being held captive. John's army of robots would provide cover, while Sarah and John would take care of any threats that arose. The journey to the quarantine zone was treacherous. The streets were littered with debris, and the buildings had been partially destroyed. The trio had to navigate carefully to avoid drawing attention to themselves. As they neared the quarantine zone, John saw that the infected humans had barricaded the area with piles of debris and barbed wire. It would be impossible to enter through the main entrance. They would have to find another way in. Sarah led them to a side alley that ran alongside the quarantine zone. There was a small hole in the fence, just big enough for them to squeeze through. John's robots would have to stay outside. Once they were inside, John saw the devastation that the infected humans had caused. The streets were empty, except for a few stray infected humans that roamed the area, their eyes filled with madness. John and Sarah moved quickly, keeping to the shadows and avoiding any infected humans that they encountered. The girl stayed close behind, her eyes wide with fear. They soon reached the building where the girl's family was being held. The entrance was guarded by a group of infected humans, armed with crude weapons like pipes and chains. John signaled for his robots to move forward, and they charged at the group of infected humans, firing their weapons. The infected humans were caught off guard, and they scattered in all directions. John and Sarah took advantage of the chaos and made their way into the building. They found the girl's family huddled in a corner, their eyes filled with fear. Come on, John said, motioning for them to follow. We have to move quickly. They hurried back the way they had come, dodging infected humans and debris as they went. John's robots were waiting outside, their weapons at the ready. They made it back to the hole in the fence, and the robots lifted the debris out of the way so that they could escape. The girl's family was loaded into a waiting vehicle, and John, Sarah, and the girl climbed in as well. As they drove away from the quarantine zone, John felt a sense of relief. They had succeeded in their mission, and they had rescued the girl's family from certain death. But he knew that the infected humans would not give up so easily. They would be back, and they would be more determined than ever to take revenge on those who had dared to challenge them. John turned to Sarah, his new ally, and nodded. They had work to do. They would continue their fight against the infected humans, and they would do whatever it took to survive in this new, dangerous world. The rescue mission had been a success, but John and his team were not able to escape unscathed. Sarah had sustained a deep cut on her arm from one of the infected humans' makeshift weapons and the girl's family was in shock from their ordeal. John knew that they needed to find a safe place to regroup and tend to their wounds. He directed the driver to take them to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. 
It was isolated, but it would provide shelter and a place to rest. As they arrived at the warehouse, John's robots cleared out the debris blocking the entrance. They drove the vehicle inside and shut the doors behind them, creating a secure fortress. John instructed his robots to set up a perimeter and keep watch while he tended to Sarah's wound. He cleaned it with alcohol and stitched it up as best he could, but he knew that she would need more medical attention. The girl's family was huddled together in a corner, still in shock from their captivity. John went over to them and introduced himself. I'm John. We came to rescue you. The father of the family, a tall man with graying hair, nodded solemnly. Thank you. We owe you our lives. John assured them that they were safe now and that they would do everything they could to help them. He turned to his robots and instructed them to gather any medical supplies they could find in the warehouse. As they searched the warehouse, John noticed that something was off. There was a strange smell in the air, and he could hear a faint rustling sound. He signaled for his robots to be on high alert, and they fanned out to investigate. It wasn't long before they discovered the source of the noise. A group of infected humans had followed them to the warehouse, drawn by the scent of fresh blood. John knew that they had to act fast. He directed his robots to take up positions around the perimeter and prepare to defend the warehouse. The infected humans were relentless, throwing themselves at the walls and doors in an attempt to get inside. John and Sarah fired their weapons at them, taking them down one by one. The battle was intense, but in the end, John and his team emerged victorious. The infected humans lay scattered around the warehouse, their bodies torn apart by the robot's weapons. John breathed a sigh of relief. They had survived another day, but he knew that there would be more challenges to come. They would have to find a way to get Sarah proper medical attention, and they would need to find a more permanent place to set up camp. But for now, they were safe. John turned to the girl's family and smiled. We'll get through this together. Days turned into weeks as John and his team struggled to survive in the post-apocalyptic world. They had found a small community of survivors and had set up camp with them. Sarah had received medical attention and was on the road to recovery, but the threat of the infected humans still loomed over them. John had spent countless hours repairing and upgrading his robots, making them stronger and more agile. He knew that they were his only hope of survival in this harsh new world. One day, while on a scouting mission, John and his team stumbled upon a group of infected humans who were organizing themselves into an army. They had developed rudimentary weapons and had even managed to capture a few robots from another group of survivors. John knew that this was bad news. If the infected humans were able to band together and coordinate their attacks, it would be almost impossible for him and his team to survive. He made the difficult decision to mount a preemptive strike against the infected human army. He knew that it was risky, but he believed that it was the only way to ensure their survival. John and his team prepared for battle, loading their weapons and arming their robots. They knew that this would be the final stand, and that the fate of their community rested on their shoulders. The battle was brutal and unforgiving. The infected humans fought with a ferocity that John had never seen before, their eyes filled with a frenzied bloodlust. But John and his team were prepared. They fought with skill and precision, taking out the infected humans one by one. The robots were the key to their success. They were able to take down multiple infected humans at once, their weapons tearing through flesh and bone with ease. The battle raged on for what felt like an eternity, but in the end, John and his team emerged victorious. The infected human army lay in ruins, their bodies piled high on the ground. John was exhausted, both physically and emotionally. He had never wanted to be a hero, but he knew that he had to be. He had to protect the people he cared about, no matter the cost. 
As he surveyed the aftermath of the battle, John realized that this was their new reality. The world had changed, and they would have to change with it if they wanted to survive. He turned to his team and gave them a nod of acknowledgement. We did it, he said. We survived. And with that, John and his team began the arduous task of rebuilding their community, knowing that the threat of the infected humans was still out there, waiting for their next move. But they were ready. They had their robots, and they had each other. And that was all they needed to face whatever the future held.